Hey guys, Long Haul Larry, Big Blue, and it is January 10th, 2019. And as I have said in the videos past, uh, I got a gift from my daughters for one of my little gift for Christmas, one of my daughters gave me. And it is a book of bad dad jokes for 2019. And January 10th, here's the joke. I was thinking about moving to Moscow, but there's no point in rushing into things. <laughs> Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to take that as, you know, I'm the dad and I have bad jokes. I don't know what I was supposed to take that with my daughters. There's some, there's some pretty corny ones in there. But I am actually, closest town is Bidwell, Ohio. And that is where I spent the night, right there on that on-ramp. I saw somebody left a comment or something. Did you see the no parking or the new parking signs in Ohio or something like that? No, I, I didn't. I, I know they don't want people parking something about on on ramps or off ramps or something. I heard something about that. Thought this Volvo guy was gonna run right into me. He was way back there when I came out. But he ran right up to my butt, finally jumped over. But um, I actually was shut down last night about 9 p.m. And I was running out of hours. I've been running split sleeper berth. And I got up just in Ohio here, and I pulled in. There's a Love's truck stop. Pulled in there at 9 p.m., and there wasn't a parking spot to be had, and I was seriously low on hours. I think I only had like 16 minutes left to drive, and I was like, uh-oh, there's going to be a problem. And so I went on down the road, and there was a rest area right there. So I was able to work into get into that rest area and there was no parking spots or nothing but it got to the on-ramp and there was a spot available on the on-ramp and I do not do well <clears throat> sleeping on the on-ramps like that. I usually cannot sleep with cars and trucks going by me and stuff but man I, I don't know I think I must have died a little bit last night in my sleep or something. Stay over there Protech. Volvo he's all on his phone that's he was probably on his phone. That's my why he almost ran into me. But um, I pulled on there and I figured I saw my log for seven and a half hours. I figured I'd just do it a, a, a split sleep worth get my uh, eight hour sleep birth and then I would just take off because I figured I wouldn't sleep good at all. And I must have turned all the alarms off or something. I don't know. I have no idea, but. I woke up and it was 13 hours later. It's like yikers. The body must have said, that's enough. Oh, there's, I bet you anything that's a Van Vike guy that loaded with me. I was sitting on his shoulder there. He left about the same time I did. He was checking out. And he was on the phone at the checkout counter at uh, <clears throat> at the shipper, and he was on the phone talking to somebody, and he was saying, yeah, I'll probably make it just into Ohio, and I'm going to run it out of hours. And he, go, and he was saying, I, I don't know where I'm going to find a parking spot. I bet you anything that was him. Because he was driving a Kenworth. So we're just rolling out along, we're right at 35. And uh, what, we'll run this all the way over, what, to Dayton, I believe it is. And then jump on 75. 
five just for a little bit, run that up. And then get on to 70. I've had a lot of people um, asking me about the motor in Big Blue. Um, it is a Cummings engine. I believe it's that X15 thing or whatever. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really familiar with Cummings engines very much. But I believe this is that X15 motor or whatever they, they put in there. Um, this is a newer style motor, so I think it's that X15. And they um, they put it, that's what they put back in there. They didn't put the back car motor back in there, or put that in there. <clears throat> they replaced it with what came out of it. But I did ask the, the guy at the shop, I asked him, I said, hey, buddy, did you turn it up to like 700 horse? Yeah, he kind of laughed and he's like, no, no. He says, we have to leave it stock. He said, that's the instructions from Cummings. You know, when we do this with the warranty, it's got to be left stock or whatever. So, I tell you what, we're going to be pulling over here sometime today, here in the next couple hours or something. When I find a, a pilot or a flying J, I'm going to pull in there and grab me a shower. That's one bad thing about sleeping at the rest areas and stuff like that is you don't have a shower available when you get up. So we'll find a shower here today at the pilot or flying G someplace and when I do that I'll, I'll grab the camera out and pop the hood and give you guys a peek at the motor. Our GPS is telling us that we shall be arriving up there about 7 p.m. I got 511 miles to go. Um, like I said, I'm gonna stop, take a shower, everything else, so it'll probably be later than that. I'm not really in that big a hurry. Guys, we are here at Spiceland, Indiana. Got a Flying J, it's got that thing in the shower. Much better, much better. And you guys have been asking me to see the new engine. There it is. There's our new engine. The same as the old engine, it's just uh, new. <laughs> but you guys wanted specs. So here, let's look at it. It says it is 425 horse. The torque and foot bones is 1550 at 1100 and 1750 at 1800. The ISX 15. Data manufacturing 2014. There you go. Probably the same valve cover that was on it before, but it is set at spec, it is set at stock. It's 425 horse. I had a couple people ask me about uh, what's the break-in procedure and all this other stuff. <clears throat> there is no break-in procedure. They had a dyno there at their shop and they broke it in there. But everything is brand new on it. Anything that had oil going through it, turbo, everything. Anything that had oil that went through it to cool it or lubricate it, Brand new, air compressor, steering pump, everything. Brand new. So, pretty cool. Well, time to make our way. I actually went into Denny's in there and um, had me a Mediterranean chicken dish. It's all right. See where this guy's gonna go. Not sure this 
this is the exit or not. <clears throat> I think it is. Actually, I don't think it is. No. I think it is. And grab yourself a nice shower. Yeah, this is the exit. There is no other one up there. This motor is really sounding good. It really does sound good. There's a little bit of a rattling noise. I don't know if you guys are picking that up in the microphone or not, but um, it's actually my steering column. It's the plastic. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be making this. Yep, there we go. don't have like everything in my truck and everything because I um, I actually um, I had to go pick the truck up from the shop and stuff and I didn't didn't want to carry everything up there try you know transfer it over I figured the next time I come home then I'll put everything back in the big blue so I don't have all like my mounts and camera mounts and all that stuff in there just kind of got the basic stuff on my dash over in the corner it actually goes away. Which I'll do some investigating about. See what's making the rattly noise. See if I can fix her up. It's only when I take off when I'm going on the highway I don't hear it at all. It's just when I take off and stuff. We got 38 miles to Indianapolis and then start heading north and running on up to Oconomowoc. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Wisconsin. We're a couple miles away from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Kind of a bad deal here. I kind of had a good vibe going on. I, was, I thought I had a delivery at 1 a.m. and I was actually on the phone when I was talking with John for Jimmy D Travels and I was talking on the phone with him a little bit and he asked where I was going and I told him and he's like, oh, you got like a 4 or 5 a.m. appointment? I'm like, no, nah, I think it's 1. I, I can swear that's what I read. And he's like, usually it's like 4 or 5. And I went back and emailed and looked, and sure enough, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, why do you need to come over here right now, man? <laughs> I don't know why people need to come in front so fast. You know? Get some distance. Then put it all over. There's nobody behind you. So I was kind of hoping to get empty about one. I was hoping to get empty about, you know, I'd be out of there about two to three o'clock. And I'm actually going home next, so I figured I'd be home early in the morning and I could get some work done. But, now I'm gonna be here all night. 
So I'm actually going to pull in. There's a quick trip right up here, right by the place. And I'm going to pull in there and I guess hang out there and get some sleep. Try to at least. Try to go to sleep and I guess get up for my appointment and go run it in there. I was telling you earlier that I would uh, tell you about this place. This is Roundy's in Oconomowoc. And this is not a very well-liked place. Um, it, the people, the people at the windows, it just, they don't, have, they always have really bad attitudes. And, and the lumping service here is just terrible and stuff. I used to come in here a lot. When I was independent, I, for a while I was uh, hauling Johnsonville sausage out of Johnsonville, Wisconsin, and I would haul loads down to Indianapolis. And then about two to three times a week, I would pick up loads in Indianapolis and run them right back up here and deliver at midnight or one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, whatever. And then when I got empty, I'd run back up to Johnsonville and load up again and take off for Indianapolis. I used to just circle back and forth. But um, and I used to come in here and the lumber service is so expensive. It was so much they charge so much money here. And I would come in there and uh, they take forever. And then they they always ask you. They'd ask you if you want to unload it yourself. And one time I decided, okay, I'm just gonna load it myself. See how this works out. And I went in there and I said, yeah, I'll unload it myself. And they said, okay. I said, go by your door. So I went back by my door and the receiver came over, grabbed my paperwork, and he gave me my tie high sheet. Which if you don't know what that is, a tie high sheet is how many boxes on a layer and how many layers high. So the tie is how many on a layer and then the high is how many stacks high. And they give you a motorized pallet jack. Yeah, I'm sitting around here, so you get to use this. So it's real easy. Just push the trigger, and it drives around. And, and I did it, and I mean, I unloaded a truck in like 20 minutes. And there was actually like three pallets that had to be broken down. All the rest of them were fine the way they came. So I unloaded it, flagged down the guy, said, hey, ready. He came over, checked it out, gave my paperwork. I went and checked out. And away I went. And I talked to the broker and said, hey, I'll start unloading these myself. And he was paying like $250, $275 for lumpers. And I said, I'll unload these myself. Pay me a hundred bucks, I'll write you out a receipt. And he was like, sure. So I started doing this all the time. I'd be in and out of there. I did this a lot. And then I said, uh, one day I went in there and, and I said, hey, uh, I unloaded it myself. And a girl behind the glass was like, is your, is your company on that list? And I'm like, what list? And she pointed at some piece of paper and I looked up and it was like five or six companies on the list. And I'm like, and it was like Swift and it was like big major companies. And I'm like, no. And she goes, well, then you can't unload it. You have to hire a lumper. I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah. She goes, unless you can show me proof that you have that your company has two million dollars in liability insurance. I'm like, why would you have two million? That don't make any sense. Cause um, DOT regulations is you have to carry a million dollars in liability. So why would somebody carry an extra million for no reason? And that was the whole thing. And so they made up this little rule that you had to have two million. Well, that excluded everybody. The only the people that have two million are the are the companies that are like self-employed. They are uh, not self-employed, self-insured, which is like Swift and Warner and stuff. They insure themselves. And so they can say, "I got ten million dollars liability, whatever." And so you lost that thing, but they did turn around and they made it so that the lumpers could only charge a certain amount. They couldn't, they couldn't come up with these crazy $275 amounts. It was, it got down to where it was like 75 bucks or something. But you, you couldn't unload your own. So, 
that's what went on. And instead of getting uh, pulling in there and being unloaded in 20 minutes, half an hour and being out of there, you go in here and it's like hours. It always is. I used to come in here and I'd be right next to the guy. They give me a door, give me another guy a door. He'd hire a lumper. I would unload it myself. I'd go in there, unload the truck, have it all sorted out, get my paperwork signed, I'd come back out there. And um, they and he'd hire the lumper and he's just sitting there and he's still got a green light. And they're uh, not even, didn't even start on him yet. <laughs> I used to do that all the time. I got a truck here that's gonna race me, I guess. The place is actually back behind me. Okay, it's a JB Hunt. There's a uh, quick trip up here. And, um, come on, JB Hunt, go. There's a uh, target. I've, I've actually picked up loads up here with JB Hunt. There's a target right up here that he's going to. But um, there is a um, Kmart up here and stuff, and it's a quick trip, and uh, that's where I'm gonna park. And I guess do an eight-hour break here, and then my appointment time will be up, and I can run there. Right up here is where we're gonna turn, so I will catch you guys later. I hope that everyone out there is having themselves a great day, a great night. So watching this here video. And if you're not, so I can change everything around. Try it all over again tomorrow. I'll catch you guys later. See ya!